Hey guys, today we're going to take a little break from the tune-up series and continue disassembling the L28. I felt a little guilty because we started disassembling this engine maybe two months ago and I really haven't made that much progress because I was busy uh, working on the engine that's in the car so we're going to get a few more bolts out and continue with the disassembly. Starting with this uh, oil filter. So a quick tech tip, um, whenever you're removing the oil filter, buy one of these strap type oil filter removers instead of buying a plier type like this. All this is going to do is uh, crush the oil filter like you see here and I had zero luck with that. So um, these are a lot easier to use and it won't damage the oil filter as much. Not that I'm uh, planning on keeping this oil filter anyway. We're also going to remove this oil pressure sending unit. This unit is completely garb. Um, it's been crushed. So I'm no, I don't plan on keeping this. But behind the oil filter, there is a 14 millimeter nut that you can use to take it out. There's the oil pressure sending unit. You can see the little uh, nut on the back that you can use. We'll also just take out the dipstick. Now I think it's time to remove the oil pan from the bottom. So I've drained the pan as much as I could. I just let it drip out for about an hour. It's just continuing to drip, drip. But this is the last chance that you have to drain the oil if you haven't done so already before you make a mess by rotating the engine upside down. Well, I'm sure oil and some leftover coolant is still going to drip out, which is why I have this giant cardboard box at the bottom. Alright, so we're going to remove the oil pan. Uh, there are, I don't know how many they are, but they are all 10 millimeter uh, tiny little bolts. So we'll just go around the pan and get all of them out. And I didn't know this, but they're, they're actually different length bolts. So some of them are small, some of them are long, so I guess pay attention to which ones are which. Some of them are really pretty rusted in, so be careful if you're using an impact wrench. You definitely don't want to break these off. All right, we're just going to take a chisel and just work around it. This is really, really stuck on, so I'm just trying to be careful to not bend the oil pan in any places. So I'm just going to try hitting it in in a lot of different spots. And there we go. If you guys want to see how the bottom of the oil pan looks like, here it is. There's a whole lot of gunk around the edges, but uh, the oil pan actually looks relatively clean. If you guys want to take a closer look inside, here it is. Now, I'm, not, I'm definitely not an expert at examining engine, or especially internal engine components, but to my unprofessional eyes, this all seems fine. I don't see obvious signs of damage or cracks. And for those of you who have been following regularly, uh, I picked this engine up 
for 150 bucks from a guy on Craigslist. So I have zero idea of the um, engine's history. So I don't know if it was removed because it had a problem or if it was simply removed because somebody wanted to do an engine swap and it's perfectly fine. So everything that we're doing is, is a bit of a gamble. So we're spending all this time disassembling the engine, but at the end of the day, the only thing that's really gonna tell us whether or not this engine is worth rebuilding is when I get this whole thing pressure tested at the, the machine shop. But we'll just kind of continue keep going and uh, hope for the best. Next up is just removing this oil pickup tube. And I think it's a 12 millimeter. There's two bolts on each side. You know, the filter actually looks relatively clean. There's not that much gunk that's stuck to the screen. Um, so hopefully that means that the engine hasn't been um, circulating a whole bunch of gunk inside. So other than the pickup tube, we're not going to mess with the bottom end just yet. Uh, we'll get back to the front of the engine and remove the front cover. Since we removed a whole bunch of stuff from the front cover already, um, there's not that many bolts left. Those two were 12 millimeters. This is a 10. This is also a 10. And I think there's two more up here that's hidden by all the grime. I'm just going to double check that I remove all the bolts before I start um, smacking this with a mallet. I think that was everything. I'm going to take this rubber mallet here and Here's the front cover. Okay, so the chain tensioner right here, this is exactly why the chain holding tool is necessary whenever you're working on something that makes you uh, loosen the chain's tension because once this thing pops out, unless you remove the front cover, there's no way to place this back in. So this has popped out, so I can, when the chain, when the front cover is removed, I can just manually set it like this, so it'll hold. But once this pops out, you have to remove the front cover to reset the tensioner. Otherwise, it's just gonna get jammed. So it's kinda cool to see in person how this thing works. As you let the chain go, it just pops out like that. So I'm going to remove uh, the tensioner and the two chain guides and of course the chain itself. Just some more 10 millimeter bolts to remove this guide. Now we can remove the chain. And I, I really don't know if I'm gonna use any of these parts. There are uh, timing kits that you can buy as a set that includes things like the guides and a new chain um, and a tensioner and all that stuff. So I'll probably use that, but there's no reason to throw away these parts just yet. If these guides don't have that much groove inside of them, that usually means that the chain wasn't worn excessively. 
but I can see that kind of the plasticky parts uh, are starting to fall apart and I would be really concerned about that breaking loose even more while the engine is in operation so I probably will just uh, replace all of these parts but just in case at least uh, <laughs> keep the bolt handy because you never know what you're going to lose Alright, so now we're going to turn the engine back over. Oh man, there's got no oil. I guess we'll just let the oil drain for a little bit. <laughs> Alright, so what we're going to do now is try to take out these freeze plugs. There's four on this side of the engine, there's another four on the other side. There's one on each end as well, making the total uh, ten plugs. The guide suggests that I take a punch like this and hit one corner of the, the plug. And it should rotate and I should be able to use a vice grip to just pull it out. That sounds really simple, but I've never done this before, so I have no idea how this is how this is going to turn out. But let's just try it. Well, let's try this one. <laughs> not turning. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Or maybe it is turning. One second. Oh, there we go. One plug done. Well, I'm obviously not going to reuse this freeze plug, so I'm just tossing it. So I don't think we can take out the freeze plugs on each end just by hammering on it um, because these sit way too close to the, the cylinder bore um, so it won't be able to rotate but um, the method that the guide suggests is drill a small hole in the middle and screw in like a sheet metal screw and then try to lever it out that way but we need to be really careful that we don't drill too far and then actually hit the bore. Alright, I am admitting defeat on this plug. I've been at it for 30 minutes and I'm no closer to taking that out. So um, I'm just going to have the machine shop, uh, when I take this block in, have them take this out because I think I'm just doing more harm than good at this point. The machine shop can do this rather easily and I'm just gouging the, the plugs right now and getting metal flakes everywhere. So. The motto of this channel should be, if you can't do it properly, pay someone who can. So the last thing I'm going to do before I punch out the pistons is remove these uh, ridges here at the top of each uh, cylinder board. 
And this is the part of the cylinder bore that the rings don't travel to. You can see that the, I guess the clean part just kind of ends right here. Um, and if you plan on keeping your pistons, um, you should remove this ridge uh, before you punch them out because forcing it through with this ridge is going to damage the pistons. I honestly don't know if I'm keeping the pistons or not, but um, even if there's a slim chance that you're going to be keeping the pistons, just go the extra mile and take a blade and just carve off the, the piston or the carbon buildup right here uh, so that it's um, reasonably smooth. Now, even after you remove the carbon buildup, if you're able to still catch your fingernail on this ridge here, then um, your cylinders or your combustion chambers will probably need reboring, which means new pistons anyway. So what I'm gonna do is uh, take a uh, flat blade like this. This one is uh, from a gasket scraper, but you wanna hold it parallel to the to the walls so you're not scratching the cylinder um, bore surface. And the carbon buildup should come off uh, relatively easily. You really don't have to worry too much about the, the carbon uh, particles falling into the cylinder um, because we'll be taking it out anyway, but I'm just taking extra precautions. Again, be really, really careful not to gouge the cylinder's walls. It really doesn't take a lot for a blade like this to cut through the carbon. So let me, let me give you guys a close-up look of the small amount of work that I just did. So there's the ridge that I just cleaned the carbon off of. And here is an um, area that I didn't. So going back to this area, if I run my finger along the ridge, I can still feel that there's a slight level difference, but it's nowhere, uh, it's nothing that I can catch my fingernail on. It's not even close. So it feels really pretty smooth. And this is a great sign uh, for the engine. It probably means that this, or the cylinder walls don't need to be rebored, uh, which saves me a lot of money because like I said, I want to keep this engine relatively stock. So that's great news. I'm gonna go ahead and work to remove all of the carbon buildup on all the ridges. And we'll do the fingernail test on every single one, but it looks pretty good so far. <laughs> I know some of you are gonna frown upon this, but I'm actually using a white Rolock disc to clean off the edges here. The white Rolock discs are made to be soft enough to be used on aluminum, and this block is cast iron. So as long as you use very, very, very light pressure, um, this shouldn't be gouging any of the metal um, on the cylinder bores. So this is cylinder number six, which I've cleaned off using the white Rolock disc. And this is a really close up of the ridge here. And as with cylinder number one, this one does seem to have a slight recess that I can feel, but it's no, it's nothing that I can catch my fingernail on. So I'm gonna keep working to remove all of the carbon buildup on all of the cylinders, but that's it for today. Um, hopefully next time we'll be able to pop out the pistons and start examining the, the various journals. I'll see you guys next time.